We'd like to take a moment to thank our listeners sincerely for your support of Honest News Network Ministry. If you're interested in supporting this ministry, please use the information provided. Thank you. Each prayer I pray, each step I take, I It's amazing how folks' ears are abuzz when you share things that are going on in the world, events, different things that are going on. But you share the Word of God, and they turn their ears off. The Bible says the time will come when they'll turn their ears away from the truth. And I don't think it's just turning their ears away from the Bible or the truth in the Word of God as far as the Bible. I think as far as turning their ears away from truth even in the world, what is true. When people are dishonest, they don't want the truth. And that's why at the time of Jesus' crucifixion, a murderer was released to go free because the people had become so corrupt. The leadership had become so corrupt. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? And we're living in a time of tremendous corruption. Tremendous corruption. And how do we keep ourselves from that corruption? How do we not go in that direction of worshiping the devil and submitting to the devil? And as we see in the book of Revelation, the world is going to worship the beast. They're going to worship the devil through the beast and the, the image of the beast. How can we make sure that our worship is being directed to God? To the living God. How do we know we're worshiping the living God? Because we better make sure we are. He's a jealous God, and he said he'll have no gods before him. Amen? Uh, it boggles the mind that Satan even tried to get Jesus to bow down and worship him. You don't think he's going to try to make a play for you? You don't think he's going to try to get your worship? And it doesn't have to be literally bowing down to the devil like a Satan worship. Or it doesn't have to be that way, folks. You could just submit to the devil and do what he wants you to do, and you're already worshiping him. Are you listening? We're going to continue our series on true worship. This is part three of that series. And if you haven't listened to the first two parts, you may want to do that before listening to the third part. True worship. A lot of folks don't even know what true worship is. They don't even know what it is to worship God. They don't even know what worship is. They think singing... a a song is worship. The highest level of worship is obedience. So you think about that. When you obey the devil, you're worshiping him, even as a believer. Amen.
God didn't create us to worship the devil, to submit to the devil. He created us to worship him. Amen? And he's worthy. He's worthy of that worship. He's our creator, but he's God. He is God. Amen? God has no beginning, and he has no end. You look up at the starry sky, you look up at the firmament, the heavens, realize that the universe, the whole universe, is inside of God. Amen. The science world today is wondering about the universe, how expansive it is, and how many Milky Ways and how many galaxies there are out there. <laughs> and that's inside God. God is outside the universe, people. Praise God. We serve an awesome God. In the true sense of that word, awesome. Not like the world uses it for a pair of sneakers or a fast car. Anybody listening? Worship. True worship. As the scripture says, it's our, it's our service. It's our service to God. Praise God, people. It's our service to God. You can't say you're serving God if you don't worship him. If he's not everything to you. If he's not your all in all. If he's not your everything. You're not worshiping him. More and more as you grow in the Lord. The more you develop in this experience, this Christian experience, you should have less and less time, capacity for anything but him. Your time should be coming consumed with him. Thoughts, your thoughts, keeping your mind stayed upon the Lord, he keeps you in perfect peace. Say, it's impossible, Brother Joseph. I don't know how to do it. How do you keep your mind stayed upon the Lord? It's a miracle. It's not something we can do. It's not something you do by merely discipline or habit. No, it's a miracle. Only God can keep our minds stayed on him, people. That's why the Bible says in the book of Revelation about ISAV. Anoint thine eyes with ISAV. What is he talking about? ISAV is a glue. God has to give that to us that we keep our eyes glued on him. Amen? Because like Peter in the storm, he didn't keep his eyes on Jesus. And he began to sink. Anybody listening? We need that ISAV. Praise God. John chapter 4, beginning with verse 23 through verse 24. For the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. 
Jesus is saying this. To worship the Father. God the Father. Obviously, this was because Jesus at the time had become a man. Because the Son of God had become a man. He wanted all the attention to be on the Father. He didn't come into the world to be worshipped. Are you listening? It's not why he came into this world. He came into this world to give his life. Amen. The devils, the demons recognized him. They knew who he was, but the people didn't. Unless God the Father gave them revelation of who Jesus was when he was on the earth, they didn't know. Peter didn't know who he was till God the Father gave him a revelation. Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't reveal it unto you. My Father, which is in heaven, revealed it to you. Amen. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must must worship him in spirit and in truth. You cannot worship God in the flesh. And you cannot worship God in a lie. Amen. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for putting up with us, Lord. Thank you for your long-suffering and your patience. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your mercy, for bestowing upon us your grace. Instead of getting angry at us, Lord, you, you pity us. You know our frame. You know, Lord, that we're but flesh and blood. We ask that you help us, Lord, to attain to that measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. Help us, Lord, to grow into the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ. To be fully, completely surrendered to you, Lord. And that we would only worship you. We ask that you bless and that you anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Praise God. God is a spirit, people. You say, well, Brother Joseph, I know that. Yeah, but we need to be reminded. We need to be reminded God is a spirit. He's not flesh and blood. Amen? We're going to look at how Jesus dealt with the devil. When the devil tried to tempt him, tried to get him to worship, to bow down to him. How did Jesus overcome? How did Jesus handle this temptation? Matthew chapter 4, verse 8 through 11. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. He didn't literally take him up into a mountain. He did this through vision or through dream. Are you listening, people? He showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. You realize he showed like a flash. He gave Jesus this vision or this dream, most likely a vision, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a flash. And this is what he said to him. All these things, he said, I will give thee. 
if thou wilt fall down and worship me. He already owned everything. Listen to me. How are you going to overcome the temptation of the devil? You got to recognize who you are in Christ Jesus. You got to know that through inheritance, the devil can't offer you the kingdoms of the world that are already yours if you worship God. Anybody listening? Praise God. Everything is already yours. The devil can't offer it to you if you worship God. The Lord says to him that overcometh will be my son. What did he say? And shall inherit all things. All things. You've heard the term before that do you want the candy now or do you want the candy store later? Listen, people, the devil has nothing, nothing to offer you comparing to what God is offering. The things that God is offering are eternal. Eternal. The things the devil offers, listen to me, everything the devil offers is a lie and is temporal. You know, there's people that go out of this world serving the devil, and they believe when they get over there, they're going to reign with him. They're going to rule with him. Because that's what he teaches his followers. Anybody listening? But it's all based on a lie. It's all based on deception. Lucifer convinced a third of the angels that they were going to reign with him. They were going to overcome God and they were going to reign with him. And there are many today from humanity that are believing the same lie. This is how Jesus handled the devil. Then saith Jesus unto him. Listen, people. Then said Jesus unto him. Get thee hence, Satan. Didn't even give him any space. Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. How well do you know it is written? How well do you know your Bible? How well do you know the scriptures? It is written. It is recorded. It is written down. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shalt thou serve. Praise God, people. In his human form, when he was on the earth, the Son of God, the Word that became flesh, he worshiped the Father. And he was saying to the devil, I only worship my Father, I only worship God. I will not worship you. Praise God, people. How much do you love the Father? How much do you really love the Father? Jesus loved the Father. 
Maybe we'll never understand fully how much he loves the Father. Then the devil leaveth him. And behold, the angels came and ministered unto Jesus. The devil left him. There were some things the devil tempted him about before he got to the part of worship, folks. The devil doesn't start out trying to get your worship. Are you listening? He didn't start out with the worship. He didn't try to get Jesus to worship him right away. And he's not going to work on you that way either. Amen. He's going to try to get you to act outside God's will. Yeah, even, even do spiritual things to where Jesus will say to those on that day, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And they're going to say, well, wait a minute. Didn't we do all these wonderful things in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? They thought they were being spiritual. Outside of the will of God. Satan did his best trying to get Jesus to act outside the will of the Father. Go ahead. You're hungry. You've been fasting 40 days and 40 nights. Go ahead. Turn those stones into some bread. I mean, you know, Jesus doesn't put on shows. For those today that are caught up in the show. For those today that are caught up in entertainment, Jesus does not put on a show. Amen. You ain't, you ain't going to find Jesus Christ in these meetings today where man is putting on a show, where there's entertainment people. That's not Christ. That's not the Holy Ghost. God is interested in saving souls and healing bodies. Deliverance people. He's not putting on shows. He's not entertaining the flesh. Amen. Praise God. You say, well, that's kind of boring, Brother Joseph. Then you don't know God. You've never really felt his presence. You don't know your creator. If you think it's boring to, to worship him, you've never been in his presence. If you have to have the things of the world, you left his presence. If you have to be filling that void inside with the things of the world, then you left his presence. You're not in his presence. You're not abiding in his presence. And when the devil comes to tempt you, you're not going to be strong enough to overcome. Amen. And the devil's not going to leave you. You want the devil to leave you alone? He's not going to leave you. Amen. The only way he's going to leave you is if you stop giving place to him. Hmm? James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. Don't give place to him. Be against him. Withstand the devil. Stand against the devil. In God's power, stand against him. He's not your friend. He's the foe. He's the enemy. Stand against him. And he will flee from you. He left Jesus. Now, how many know the Bible says he didn't leave Jesus for good? The Bible says, you know, he, he didn't leave forever. The Bible says he left for a season, and the devil's not going to give up on you either. He's coming back. 
He's coming back, people. You may whip him the first time, but he's, he's going to come back. He's not going to give up. He'll just come back with greater force than ever. Amen? He'll come back with stronger demons, with stronger temptations than he did the first time, the ones you defeated him, the ones that didn't have any effect on you, but he'll come back with something that will have an effect on you if you don't stay in the Spirit, if you don't remain in the presence of God. Amen? This is not a game. God never said it was. This is the soul. That's how serious this is. This is about the soul. Where your soul is going to be for eternity. Praise God, people. You know, it's not an option to worship God. He demands it. He demands our worship. We got to stop sugarcoating this. We got to stop trying to reinterpret, well, God doesn't really mean that. Our God is a consuming fire. The positive side of that, if you want to look at it this way, if you want to say, well, what, what's in it for me? You get to worship him. And not just temporarily, but forever. You get to. And as you worship him, you're in his presence. Fullness of joy. In the presence of God. Forever. You get to worship him. Not everyone gets to. Not everybody gets to worship him. Amen. Praise God. Not everyone's going to get to worship him. Not everyone's going to have that privilege to worship God. To worship the living God. Listen, there are people on this earth that get enamored they get enthralled with the beauty of god's creation they worship they serve the creature more than the creator they love his creation as far as they look up at the heavens and they look at the sunsets and the sunrises and the moon and the, the stars and all the planets and all the beauty and even worship those things. But could you imagine? The one that thought about it. It came from his mind. It came from his heart. It came from his desire. All the beauty that they enjoy. It came from God. The very one that they reject. It was his idea. It didn't just come from some big bang. It didn't just evolve. Intelligent design people. Inspired by the living God. That created all things and even created us for himself. How, how does man belittle God so easily? The God of this world blinds their mind. How can they say, I worship the universe? But I don't worship the creator of the universe. The God of this world, Satan, has blinded their minds. Amen? 
They cannot see the creator outside of the universe. Praise God. We get to. We get to worship him, people. We get to. Praise your name, Lord. Just, I'm, a lo- I'm really at a loss of words. I'm in awe. I really don't have the words, people. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men. What God has prepared for those who love him. The natural man doesn't understand, can't see it. But the Spirit of God is revealing these things to us. And it's discerned by the Spirit. You get into that place of worship, people, and the veil will be removed. And God will open your eyes and you will see What's awaiting us over there? Amen? John saw it. He wrote it down. It's in the book of Revelation. The letter, all of it that he saw, it's written down. Praise God. The veil was removed and John saw things that we have not seen. He wrote it down. Praise God, people. We've got so much to look forward to. Fight on. Amen? Fight on. Praise God. The things in this life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight on. God bless you.